My friends, Ironclad here, and I have some questions for you. Do you consider space games digital crack? Do you enjoy a good single-player game where you have to use your brain? Do you enjoy salvaging your opponents and using their own weapons against them? If so, you are just like me. Walt, of Walternate Realties, very clever, sent me a review copy of Cosmeteer five days before release. I happen to be in between projects, so I'll be making this quick. In this video, we'll be taking a closer look at Cosmeteer Starship Architect and Commander. Now strap yourself in, because here we go. Cosmoteer is available now and was released on Steam as of October 24th, 2022. The game is about commanding your own starship, building it, upgrading it, and managing its crew. You go on missions, bounty hunt, salvage, mine, trade resources, and gain infamy in the ultimate quest to build the biggest, baddest ship the galaxy has ever seen. Story? There isn't one. There's four factions to interact with, each with its own lore. You can raise or lower your relations with each one, and that's about it. Cosmoteer is taking the rim world route and letting you, the player, craft your own story. Walt actually described this game to me as RimWorld meets Factorio. We'll talk about that later. The game features a campaign and creative mode. Creative is pretty straightforward. You get infinite resources to build whatever you want. It's a giant sandbox. Go nutty. Career is the main mode and where you'll be spending most of your time. You can select a combat difficulty, an economic difficulty, as well as advanced game options for a truly custom experience. Everything you could want, really. You then choose from one of three starter ships. The Model S, which is a lightly armed ship but does come with a shield generator. The Model L, which is fast and armed with lasers. Great for those who prefer interceptor gameplay. And finally, the Model C, the heavy option. Equipped with two cannons and plenty of armor. Energy weapons and shield are for babies, so we'll be taking the Model C. You then get dropped into the solar system in your all-white spaceship with no idea what to do next. I like it already. So, how do does it work? Well, let's establish the basic mechanics. You can adjust the flow of time, zoom in and out, and pause the game. Great. If you zoom out far enough, you get a little camera that displays your ship, very much like FTL, which we can zoom in and out as well. Neat. I'll tell you this now. I hope you are a player that likes to push buttons and figure things out for yourself, because this game certainly does not hold your hand. Let's go through some of these buttons now. The eyeball displays the internals of your ship. Right-clicking will move your ship around like you are playing in RTS, with WASD controlling the camera. Shift to cue commands, all that good stuff. You can then watch as each thruster burns to maneuver your ship around. Mm-hmm, looking good. The ship editor is where you'll be spending plenty of time. From here, you can edit the layout of your ship, add or remove various parts, and can even build with a mirror mode. There's also a blueprint mode, which is a little more advanced, so we'll talk about that later. And of course, every legendary ship needs a good coat of paint. The paint editor is actually quite robust and has a lot of options. Now, the controls for painting could certainly be improved, such as adding folders for the various decals, but there's plenty of potential to make a really great looking ship. Now for crew management. You need enough slaves to operate your vessel. End of story. Actually, there's more, but for the most part, it's not necessary until you have a much larger ship. Taking a page out of RimWorld, the crew in Cosmeteer will automatically perform the jobs required on your ship and operate on a priority system. That's about as close to RimWorld as we're going to get, as otherwise the crew are mindless slaves and have no feelings or human requirements. I wish I could say the same about my wife. As for resource management, it's incredibly simple, which is honestly a good thing. You have storage areas where you keep your cargo. You can move it, set stack priority, and eject your garbage out the closest airlock. Keep your ammo near your guns, and you're already an expert at the game. Is that really it? Almost. The last ship resource is power. Since this is the future, everything runs on clean, renewable, nuclear energy. Your ship reactor poops out batteries constantly, which your little slaves run around and slap into your various ship systems. It's that easy. And finally, the hail command lets us establish communications, which we'll be using to interact with stations. So now we have some basic understanding of how our ship works. What do we do now? We solve problems with violence. The main quest type, and arguably the most fun, is bounty missions. You fly somewhere, and you kill something. Combat involves you shooting the enemy ship until one of you knocks the other out of the fight. From what I can tell, you knock out enemy ships by destroying their reactor or cockpit, and in this way, 
day, combat is pretty exciting, with chunks flying off each ship as both receive damage. And yes, you can lock your weapons onto specific ship components. So after combat, you can salvage the enemy ship and any pieces that flew off in the battle. Another interesting aspect is that you'll get more materials from salvaging intact pieces of enemy ships. Manage to knock out the enemy and kept their guns intact, help yourself to their ammo storage. Reactor still operational, you can salvage enriched uranium. It's another bit that adds to the already satisfying combat. Want to commit war crimes? Salvage the enemy vessel with the crew still inside. Maybe this game is like RimWorld after all. There are a few other mission types that don't involve killing things, such as material delivery, exploration, and making contact with new stations. We call these side quests, because when you have the option to kill, why would you do anything else. Let's talk about progression. How do we make our little ship the big ship? We take the pieces of our enemies and we weld them onto our vessel, making a bigger, girthier, pulsing spacecraft. And to acquire more shiny things, we need to spend our hard-earned credits at a station for blueprints. Yes, that's right. Just like the real world, all we need to improve our technological standard of living is cold, hard cash. And so, like an amoeba, we evolve. We consume we become more dangerous. Think amoeba aren't dangerous? Think again. In Cosmeteer, there are small growing pains in your ship development and there are big pains. Small pains are increasing the size of your ship engines and adding maneuvering thrusters so you can actually turn. Also, adding more power, usually with more or bigger reactors. Big pain time. Your crew. Your crew is surprisingly your biggest obstacle to progression. You see, by completing more and more difficult missions, you gain fame. Additional crew will only join your ship if you are famous enough to hire them. They really are the lowest of life forms. This applies even if you have enough bunks for them to sleep in. So, even if you build a giant ship, no one will join you and you'll be left to drift through the stars alone. Oh yeah, and cockpits. These give you what are called command points. Most active parts on your ship require command points and is a balancing and limiting factor when building your ship. But with cold hard cash, if you acquire the bridge blueprint, which isn't that difficult, you can upgrade to the bridge, giving you a massive 1,000 command points, rendering the two previous options obsolete. This doesn't mean much, however, seeing as how crew is the main limiting factor. Music and sound design. Nothing too crazy, but some pretty good tunes for flying around and blasting enemies. Let's give it a quick listen. So one of the main things I was wondering while playing was, instead of RTS controls, could I control the ship directly? And while at first it didn't seem like you could, it turns out you unlock additional mechanics as you play. However, after testing manual control, it's not as great as it sounds for two reasons. One, your camera seems to be locked to your ship, which makes anything except close range combat rather difficult. And two, your guns fire whenever you press left click, even if they are not aiming at your mouse cursor yet. So I found it's much more effective to simply give an advanced movement order than to try and pilot the ship yourself. Which is too bad, as coming from Star Sector, I like flying ships myself, but I'm sure this can be improved in time. Other hidden features in the game that are very helpful but not intuitive are things like filtered salvaging. If you right click on the salvage command, you can filter which resources you'd like to grab and which to ignore. By ignoring steel, we can easily grab all the special resources from ships in a fraction of the time, as well as double clicking to pick up a small batch of resources and you'll be using those resources to upgrade your ship in a fraction of the time with the blueprint mode. It's easy to install a few small pieces, but when you want to dramatically alter your ship, the blueprint mode has you covered. Move around the pieces of your ship however you want, and when you are ready, you make it so. Something you might have been wondering about is fleet combat. As it turns out, it's certainly possible. You can find derelict ships and bring them under your command. To do this, you just need to transfer your precious crew. Get the ship prepared and you are good to go. That being said, fleet controls are jank and the AI is rather stupid. I tried to get around this fact by turning my escort ship into a missile support ship. My mothership could produce missiles and in between engagements I could send the escort ship more missile parts. This way, the escort ship could shoot missiles as the missile AI seems to be smarter than the ship AI. Missiles actually try to avoid asteroids to get to their destination. AI ships, not so much. I was further let down by the fact that even after 
after equipping my escort ship with a jump drive, it couldn't actually jump to the next system with me. I'm pretty sure I'm reading this correctly, and it has the fuel it needs, it just won't. Later, nerd. My critiques? Cosmeteer is a little rough around the edges, mostly when it comes to the controls. Sure, there are hotkeys. Hotkeys that nobody is going to use. And while the combat is quite enjoyable, that's the only thing worth doing currently, unless there are people who actually enjoy mining. I'd also say that the progression model could be enhanced. Currently, you will run out of missions to do and be forced to travel to a new system. Instead of forcing players to travel, it'd be better to incentivize players to travel, having blueprints locked to higher tier areas. Instead of crew being the limiting factor, make it command points. As currently, it's easy as hell to acquire command points, but I'm flying a ship with half the recommended crew. Granted, Cosmeteer is being released into early access, so there is more to come. In fact, there's a lot more to come. At least that's what the roadmap says. We're getting quality of life, better ship AI, and general polish. Then, we're getting mission variety and the game will enter 4x territory. Then, carriers. Then, boarding parties. And finally, we're getting transformers and melee weapons. That sounds rad as fuck. However, there are no dates on this roadmap, so if I had any experience with space games and over-promising, I'd say, what could possibly go wrong? When Walt sent me the email about Cosmoteer offering me a key, he described it as RimWorld meets Factorio in Cosmoteer. Now I'll be honest, Cosmoteer has a grid system, crew that work based off priorities, and there are, in fact, factories. That's roughly where the similarities end. I'd say the game is like faster than light for obvious reasons. Airships conquer the skies. If I had it! But the game that Cosmeteer reminded me most of, at least in its current state, is Spore's Cell Stage. Now you might think I'm being silly and making a joke. I'm not. In Spore's Cell Stage, you start as a pathetic life form, barely surviving in a harsh world. You kill and devour smaller creatures than yourself. Eat enough and you grow larger and more threatening. What once was your mortal enemy is now a snack. You develop organic weaponry, salvaged from the remains of your enemies. As you consume, you grow odd appendages, some of which prove useful. Others make your existence feel awkward. Some lifeforms will develop spineless methods of defense, such as energy weapons. We don't like those kind around here. Despite the challenges we face, we develop new, bigger brain means of defeating our enemies. In this way, we adapt and survive in this hostile ecosystem. Amoeba games are incredibly satisfying, and so I find Cosmo Tier incredibly satisfying. Amoeba Gaming. While I don't think Cosmeteer plays at all like RimWorld or Factorio, I think it's a fantastic game. I've played it for several days straight now, and I've been pretending to listen to my wife while actually thinking about how I'm going to improve my ship. Mom! Cosmoteer. It's a lot of fun. Thank you, Walt, for sending me a key, and if you do end up adding all those wonderful things on the roadmap, I'll be back. Something I forgot to mention earlier, probably because I didn't actually get to try it myself, is that Cosmoteer has mod support, a ship library, including your own ship designs, and multiplayer, co-op, and PvP. Once again, I didn't get to try this since I'm drenched in sweat after giving myself 72 hours to make this video, but it looks so Solid. I should really sleep. Big thanks to the awesome Iron Patreon gang for supporting the channel and funding these videos. Even a little support goes a long way for improving the channel. As for my Star Sector videos, the Iron Shell review is going to be delayed. You'll see why once I finally release it. But don't worry, it is happening. In the meantime, I've got several more fun videos planned. I'll just be shifting my production schedule around a little bit. Can't wait to show you after you subscribe. I'm Ironclad Line, and thanks for watching.